So in the last six months, there was a ton of interest in the Govee permanent outdoor lights as well as a lot of great questions, and I tried my best to make as many videos as I could to answer the most common ones I saw. But instead of having people search for a specific video, I thought it would be a good idea to just put them all together with chapters added so you can jump around and hopefully find some answers to whatever you might be looking for. And as far as order goes, I'll start out with the install of the new Govee Permanent Outdoor Pros that goes over the cutting and splicing ability of that new kit, as well as installing their curtain lights on my garage and their new Christmas string lights on my front pillars. Next, I'll be covering what happens if you need to cut off extra lights on both the Pro and last year's model. I'll then go over how to cut, extend, and waterproof last year's model since it doesn't come with an included option like the Pro Kit does. Moving on, I'll cover how to split the permanent outdoor lights to create two runs which some refer to as a Y or T splice or running in parallels. I also made a video on how to inject power which could help solve any flickering problems you might have on last year's model. Next I'll do a step by step walkthrough of how you can convert the outdoor lights to WLED in case that's something you wanted to do. This is also for last year's model since the Pro version is not compatible with WLED. I also went over the best feature of the Govee app which I think is their DreamView syncing so make sure to take a look at that if you're curious on how everything can connect as one. And finally I'll leave you with the video I did going over the installation of last year's kit in which I also set up a few of their other outdoor products. So I'm super excited for this video because Govi just released their brand new permanent outdoor lights pro version that has some significant changes from last year's model. They also just launched their Christmas string lights that I'll be setting up. And finally, I came up with a crazy idea on how to install their curtain lights on your garage door that turned out amazing. We have lots to cover, so let's jump right in. I'll kick things off with their outdoor permanent lights pro version. And right off the bat, the biggest upgrade in my opinion is that they now have dedicated LEDs in each light for just the whites. This is a huge deal and something that we've all wanted, but just like most things, there is a flip side which I'll get into later. This kit is also matter compatible and something Govee's adding to most of their new releases, which is great to see. Opening things up, you have the welcome and getting started information. Then you're gonna see some instructions for what might be right up there with the biggest improvement from the previous version, which is how you can go about cutting and reconnecting the lights mid-string with everything you need to do so included in the box. Next you have the new lights and you can see how the RGB LED is in the middle and then surrounded by the dedicated white diodes. The design is also slightly more rounded when compared to the previous version which is on the right and they also went with the more frosted cover over the pixels which I am curious to see if it'll make any noticeable difference in brightness. Moving on you'll find the controller and then the power supply. This now brings us to another addition that I'm very happy about. Instead of just providing us with one 12 foot extension cable, they've given us a little bit more flexibility and have included two additional 4 foot extensions to use. Next we have the hardware used for cutting and if needed, reconnecting the lights. I'll get into this later, but in short, it's incredibly easy and a brilliant move by them to include this so you're not left to your own DIY methods to create a perfect install. And finally, you have some extra sticky pads and other mounting hardware if needed. Moving on, let's quickly turn our attention to their Christmas string lights. Now lights like this have been around for a while, so it's nice to see Govi finally adding this to their portfolio since it is such a versatile product with so many different use cases. Opening things up, it is pretty straightforward. You have the welcome information, the power box, and then the controller which is attached to the string lights. Now these are predominantly advertised as lights that can go on your tree, but they're also meant for outdoor use as well, and you'll see later on, outside is where I'll be installing them. Now what's unique about this product is that they're using clear drop beads built right into the string instead of using the traditional bullet heads. This results in a crystal clear color, larger lit up area, less tangles, and no halo effect. So I'm first going to be putting up the Pro Outdoor Lights, with each one getting attached approximately 3 inches from the house. This is a pretty straightforward process, but I do recommend beforehand giving it some thought on where you want to start and stop based on what will be easiest in terms of power outlets. Now here was the first gap I had in the install, and I went back and forth and decided it wasn't going to be worth the extra work of cutting and splicing things for the sake of not having one light on the side of the house. I figured if it ended up being distracting I could just cover up the LED with some blackout tape if needed. In hindsight it is always 2020, but after everything was said and done I'm glad I decided not to do anything here. Now before moving on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Aura. So this is me signing up for their free 14 day trial and during the setup process one of the many things they do is scan the internet for data brokers that have your personal information. These data brokers then make a fortune selling your information to spammers, scammers, and other entities that want to know more about you. Now Aura was able to find 30 such instances of my personal information being in the hands of these companies. Then with one click, Aura sends out a notice to have my information removed from their systems, which they are legally required to do when asked. Their all-in-one platform offers antivirus protection, credit monitoring, credit lock, 
financial transaction alerts, secure VPN, identity protection, parental controls, 24-7 US-based customer service, and much, much more. I'll leave a link in the description for you to start your own free 14-day trial, so please make sure to check them out. Thank you all so much, and now back to the video. So I'll be continuing on the bottom section of the house, and right now I'm on my third strip of lights as I'm coming up to the end. This is where I'm going to be cutting the strip, splicing in the 12 foot extension cable, and continuing with the rest of the LEDs left on the third strip on the second level. So now let's get a closer look at how this is done. You're first going to cut the lights where the splice is needed. Then make a mark at about 26 millimeters and strip back the outer layer. This is going to expose the three inner wires which we then need to strip back to around 14 millimeters. Next, I'll disassemble the connector and begin to slide the parts we need to screw back on to the side we're working on. Then the remaining piece has these lever locks that are color coordinated to match the colors of the wires. From here, it's just matching things up, locking in place, and then putting it all back together. Once that's done, we now have to do the same thing for the other side that has the remaining few lights. And now that both sides are prepped, I can go ahead and add the 12 foot extension cable to the setup. Now that the extension wire is connected, I can continue the install on the top part of the roof. I'm still putting these all about 3 inches from the house as I make my way across. Now as I get to the end, I'll be cutting off the remaining LEDs that I don't need, and again, I'll be able to use the splicing hardware, but this time, I only need to use one piece to make the stop. And in case you're wondering what that looks like, here's how that's done. You're going to be doing the exact same thing from the previous example. Strip the wires, get things connected to the adapter, but this time, all you need to do is screw in the cap and you're all set. This will waterproof the end and allow you to cut off any LEDs that you don't need to end your run at whatever point. So in total, it probably took me about one and a half hours to install this, including making all the cuts. I ended up using just over five of the six included strips that come with this 100 foot kit. And now that we have these set up, let's start working on the Christmas string lights. For this part, I'm going to be using four of their 66 foot kits to wrap each of the four pillars in front of the house. This is what I usually do each year with regular Christmas lights, so I'm excited to try these out instead. And I really hope this product doesn't get overshadowed, because when it's all said and done, this very well could be Govi's best selling item they've ever come out with, because it's completely addressable, meaning every light can be controlled independently, and you can literally install them anywhere, inside or out. Now other than the regular functionality you'd expect from these, they also have some game modes using the built-in mic that I know kids will love and parents will hate, where essentially, the louder you are, the faster the lights turn on, and more than likely, I'll never be telling my kids about this mode. And finally, I'm a huge fan of their curtain lights, but if you ever wanted to move them around, it's such a process that you probably just won't ever do it. I got to thinking, and here's what I came up with. I had some extra 2 meter long diffuser channels from a previous project that I pulled out. I then used some double sided sticky tape to put a thin layer right down the middle. And what ended up being a lucky coincidence is that the top plastic pieces of the curtain lights fit perfectly into the aluminum track and are just deep enough to hide the horizontal wires connecting each string together. Now once I got to the end, there was some extra aluminum that I cut off using my miter saw. Then I figured the easiest way to be able to move these around to different places would be to use some 3M command strips. These are the heavy duty ones that can hold up to 16 pounds and can be pulled apart and reattached as many times as you want. I'll be attaching three of these pairs to the back of the aluminum. When I was finished with one, I did go ahead and do the exact same thing with two more kits so that I would have a total of three, which is the max that can be synced together. So I don't know if Govi planned this, but three curtain lights fit perfectly on a standard length garage door. I took off the back of the 3M sticky tape and installed all three of them next to each other. I put them so that the bottom of the strings are right above ground level, which left just enough clearance at the top for the door to still open and close without hitting the aluminum channels. I then had to come up with a way to hang the cord so that the door could still open and close while everything was plugged in, while still being able to get our van in and out for the winter months. 
Unfortunately, they're very generous on the length of cords they give you, so it was easy to rig up this very ugly system that works flawlessly. I could certainly spend a little more time to make it look better, but for now, the door opens and closes, everything remains plugged in and powered, and I can still get our minivan in and out. So before getting into the final videos of everything set up, I did want to touch on a couple things, and I'm not sure how well it's going to come across on camera, but the whites on this new Pro version are absolutely amazing. There is no denying that both the cool and warm whites are significantly better. But I also realize that if your main reason for getting permanent outdoor lights is for some holiday color, you might not necessarily care about this improvement. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this change does come at a cost. This new kit has 60 lights per 100 feet, while last year's model had 72. So while I know they are going to sell a ton of this new updated version, I also think there's going to be many people that are completely happy purchasing the original kit and saving some money. Now one of my favorite things about Govi is how easy they make it to sync up pretty much all their products to create some incredible cohesive animations. So from here on out, I'll play some of my favorite examples from their Dreamview scenes, as well as their Dreamview music sync. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy the final videos. So in a recent video, I went over how to cut, splice, extend, and waterproof the original Govi permanent outdoor lights. However, I completely forgot to go over what happens if you simply want to cut off some extra lights mid-strip that you don't need, and since the Pro version also just launched, I'll cover this scenario with both kits. Let's first start out with last year's model. Here I have two complete strands connected together, each with 12 lights for a total of 24, and the easiest way to visually see what we're going to be testing out is to pull up the app and go into the DIY mode. Once here, go into Finger Sketch because this is where you can create a simple animation by selecting each LED on the strip. And starting out, you can see that we currently have 24 spaces to customize that corresponds to the 24 LEDs. And right now, I'm simply having a single red light go through all the lights and when it reaches the last LED, it goes back to the beginning and starts over. So first, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the lights and then I'll be cutting off the last pixel on the second strip. You can plug the lights back in and you'll see some white lights quickly flashing, which is the app determining how many strands are still connected. Now as you can see, all the lights are still working, but let's go back into the DIY mode to dig in a little bit deeper. So the red LED animation is still running great, but the first thing I notice is that if you look in the spaces, there are still 24 of them, meaning the app still thinks there are 24 LEDs connected, even though we now only have 23. And what this means for the animation is that when the red light reaches the 23rd LED, ideally, we would want it to then go immediately to the first LED and start over, but instead, the app still thinks there's 24 pixels in service, resulting in a very short delay before starting the cycle over. And perhaps an easier way to understand this is I can stop the animation and change the 24th space on the DIY app to red and hit apply and nothing happens. But if I change the 23rd space on the DIY section to red and hit apply, the last LED light on our strip lights up red. Let's go ahead and this time cut off an additional two lights from the second strip so that we now have a total of 21. Plug the lights back in and it will go through the same white light flashing calibration. Again, everything is still working, but let's check out the DIY mode to see if anything has changed. And sure enough, the app is still showing the 24 spaces available to customize instead of the 21 lights that are currently connected. And just like before, if I change the last three spaces on the app, which would theoretically be the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th light to red and hit apply, nothing happens since those are the ones we cut off. It's not until I change the 21st space to red that we then see the last light on the strip now turn color. 
So next I'm going to cut off all the remaining lights on the second strip except for one, and I think this scenario has caused a lot of confusion because I've seen many people say that you can only cut these in groups of four. Now I personally don't know why groups of four would make any difference, but I was excited to see what would happen. I went ahead and plugged things back in, but this time only the first 12 lights were lit up and the lone pixel on what was left of the second strip was doing nothing. I wasn't feeling very confident at the moment and thought maybe you just couldn't cut the beginning few lights off, but I wasn't ready to give up yet. I first went back into the DIY mode and it still showed that there were 24 spaces available, but this time when I changed the 13th LED to red, our 13th pixel on the strip still did nothing. There was however one last thing I wanted to check and this actually might be something people forget about, but if you go under the settings for the lights there is a spot called settings of number of segments and lo and behold the app after our last cut had automatically changed it to one segment and 12 lights. I changed it back to two segments and as soon as I did that our 13th LED lit up. So at least for my testing you can certainly cut off as many or as few lights on a strip as needed since more than likely the end of your install is not going to line up perfectly with the end of a complete strip. However the app will still operate as if those lights are still there but for the vast majority of all animations and effects you would never be able to tell the difference. The only situation where you would is in something like the DIY mode where I did the red light animation where once it gets to our 13th light the app is still going to continue with the animation as if the remaining 11 11 lights are there before starting over. Now another cool thing about this kit is that they're completely compatible with WLED and if that's something you're interested in learning about, I put together a complete walkthrough of that process that you can check out. Let's now turn our attention to the all new Govi Permanent Outdoor Pro Kit to see what the differences are. I have things set up the same way with two complete segments currently connected. Now these do have 10 lights per segment for a total of 20 on the two strings. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the last LED so that we now have 19. Once plugged in and back into the DIY, there's still 20 spaces shown, and if I change the last space to red, nothing lights up since that 20th LED is no longer there. But this is what brings me to one of the benefits of the Pro Kit over last year's model. Go into the settings, and again, go into the settings of number of segments. Here you'll notice that there is a different process. It first asks you how many green lights do you see, which is two. Then it asks you have you cut the device or not, and since we did, we say yes. It then asks you how many red lights you see, and since we cut off one, we now have nine. Hit next, and now when we go back into the DIY mode, you'll see that the number of spaces is now showing 19 instead of 20. And just to confirm, I'm going to cut off the remaining lights on the second string so that only one remains. I'll go back into the settings and adjust the segments the same way as before using the green light and red light calibration process. Then back into the DIY section, you'll see that there are now only 11 spaces showing, which means the app recognizes that there's only 11 lights currently connected. So I hope this video might help answer some questions if this is something that comes up during your install. I'll leave links in the description to both kits as well as the videos I mentioned. I'm also wanting to see if it's possible to do a Y connection to run parts of these in parallel, so hopefully I'll be able to test that out soon and put something together since I know that's a question I've been asked a lot. Now that about does it for this one, and in case you haven't seen my recent video, I'll leave you with some of my favorite examples from the Govi Pro Kit install I did in my house along with their curtain lights on my garage and their new Christmas string lights around the front pillars. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a blessed day.
So I recently installed some Govee permanent outdoor lights on my house, and I promised I'd do a follow-up video on different ways you could cut, splice, extend, and waterproof the strips in order to create a perfect install. Now to kick things off, I'll start out with a fresh new 100-foot kit from Govee. And one of the biggest head scratchers I had with this product was that you only get one extension cable to jump any type of gap you might have on your house. And as far as I know, Govee, at the time of making this video, does not sell these separately. Luckily, I was able to find a couple third-party options that right off the bat, without even having to cut the strips, will give us more flexibility on installing. And the only thing I found with these is that the threads are slightly different so they don't screw on super tight, but the waterproof ring underneath is a perfect fit which is all I really care about. So first let's do a couple tests to see how these perform to make sure there's no limitations. Once I have the lights connected I'm going to introduce the one extension piece that comes with the Govee kit. And once I turn the lights on everything's working as it should. Next I'm going to replace the Govee one with the third party extender and again everything seems to be working just fine. I'll now be introducing the second off-brand extension cable and plugging it into the first one and everything is still functioning normal. But if I plug the Govee one into the two others, meaning I now have about a 24 foot gap, this did end up being too long for the data to travel and you do see some flickering of the lights right here. So in all my testing, as long as I kept the continuous gap to about 18 feet or less, everything did seem to function properly. And finally, I'll move the Govee extender to a different spot on the setup and things go back to working as it should be with no issues. So that's all fine and dandy, but more than likely there will be at least a couple spots in your house where it would look a lot better if you're able to create a gap starting in the middle of a strip, which means you'd have to make some cuts. And to make things less cluttered, at least for now, I'll remove all additional sections other than the first one that I'll be working on. Next, I'll simply be making a cut between any two LEDs like I'm doing here. And one thing I was thankful for was that the three strands can easily be pulled apart using your hands, allowing you to better work with each wire individually. After this, I'll go ahead and strip back each wire on the two cut sides. Now even though I'm 99.9% .9 sure what I'm about to do should have no issues, I'm still going to quick test things out. I'm going to be using some Wago clips and splicing the exact same wires back together. The only thing you really need to pay attention to is that you're reconnecting the correct wires together again. Top wire gets connected to the top, middle to middle, and bottom to bottom. With everything being white, it would be easy to mix this up, so just make sure you're taking your time and getting it right. And to no surprise, this strip has zero issues with simply cutting and reconnecting things back together at the same place using some Wago clips. So moving on, I'll be removing the connectors and bringing in some extension wire. For the first test, I'll be cutting some 18 gauge silicone wires in three strips, each one being about two feet in length. Once cut, I'll go ahead and strip back both ends of all the wires. Next, for this project, I picked up a wire crimper and some heat shrink butt connectors, which will be the first method I'm gonna try. Now since I'm fairly confident that the Govee wires are 20 gauge, the pink connector should be able to accommodate that size as well as the 18 gauge wires that I'm using. You can insert the wires on both ends and then use the crimping tool to lock each side in place. I'll then do the same thing for the other two pieces. And even though I'm using these crimp type connectors, there certainly are some other types of products that would work just as well that you could use instead, like the ones you're seeing now. Once the left side's done, you can do the exact same thing for the right, but again, just make sure to pay close attention so that you're connecting the correct wires back together. Now that they're all connected, I'll do a quick plug-in to make sure everything's working correctly, and so far, so good. The final thing to do with this first example is to now use the heat gun on the shrink wraps in order to make the connections watertight. The biggest thing with this is to go slow, move back and forth, and don't get too close to the cable since the type of heat blowing out could very easily melt the outside protective layer covering the wires. I'm going to quick plug in a couple more sections and do another test just to make sure we're still in business. Everything still appears to be working perfectly even with the cut and two foot extensions we made in the middle of the first strip. For the next example I'm going to make another cut midway through the third section that we have plugged in. I'll be doing pretty much the exact same thing I just did but this time I'll be making the extension wires around four feet long to see if that makes any difference. Now the only other thing I'm doing, just for an example, is if you wanted an extra layer of protection, you could easily use a heat shrink tube and put it over the butt connectors if you wanted to reinforce things a little bit more. And even though I'm using a black tube here since I had a few extra laying around, you could get this in a variety of colors to match things better, and of course, you could do this on both sides if you wanted to go this route. I'll go ahead and test things out, and I do realize things are getting pretty messy, but essentially I have our first segment cut in half with a two foot extension right here. I then have a full segment plugged in, which is then going to a third segment that I again cut in half and inserted a four foot wire gap before continuing to the end of segment three. And just like I was hoping, everything is still working flawlessly. 
Now before moving on to the next method, I did want to go ahead and plug in some more lights as well as use some of the extension kits to see if the extra gaps and wires affected things in any way. And as you can see, even after how cut up and customized I've made things so far, there's absolutely no flickering or brightness drop off at any point along the run. Moving on to the last example, I'll again be making a cut midway through what is our fifth segment. And just like before, I'll strip back the wires. Now instead of using the individual strands of 18 gauge silicone wires, I'm going to use about 8 feet of this 20 gauge setup that has all three wires fused together that you can peel apart at the ends. I wouldn't say there's any positive or negative to using this instead of what I used before, but more just to show you that there's many different ways you can go about doing things. And instead of using the butt connectors, I found these small plastic boxes on Amazon that seem to have a very tight seal that I'm going to try using for this method. I'll use a small drill bit to make a hole on either side of the box, just big enough to squeeze the wires through. Then I'll use some inline waggle connectors to splice our 8 foot long extension wires together. And once they're connected, these clips should fit perfectly inside the box. And I would personally probably only use this option if the boxes will be under an overhang and not directly in the rain unless you wanted to seal up the holes where the wires are going through with some hot glue to make sure no water gets in. So at this point I've really chopped up these lights pretty good. I'll now spread things out to get a better view of all the work that's been done. Right here is the first cut that we made midsection and added a 2 foot gap. Further along is where we did our second midsection cut and this time added a 4 foot section of wires. And finally right here is what we just did which added 8 feet of extra wire and again done midsection. As you can see, everything is working perfectly. The last thing I'll be doing here is to add the extension kit that Govi provides right before the last segment, and then I'll be adding the two third-party extension cords right after the second segment. Once things are fired up, even with everything that I have going on, everything is still functioning normal with no flickering or loss in brightness at any point. Now I would imagine for the vast majority of installs, these lights are usually going to be placed under an overhanging part of the house and would never be exposed to this much water, but I still wanted to test things out with the hose and from what I can tell, the lights are still working as expected. So in conclusion, I personally would feel very confident making small modifications like I did in this video to ensure that these lights would be perfectly tailored to fit my house, but this doesn't mean you can just go ahead and add any length and number of wires you'd like. At some point, voltage drop would be too much and the lights at the end wouldn't function correctly if you're trying to add too much distance, so make sure to keep that in mind. Now that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I hope you have a blessed day. So by far, the question I got the most from some of my Govi videos is if you can do a Y connection or three-way split on their permanent outdoor lights, and since I'm not entirely sure, let's test things out to see what happens. Now the first thing I'm going to do is plug in 6 segments to make sure they're all still working. You'll notice these are some of the same ones I used in the cutting, splicing, and waterproofing video from a few months ago, and everything appears to still be working great. So there's a lot of reasons why you might want to have some lights branch off from the main strip, and to test this out I'm first going to remove the last two segments. Now let's say after the first two lights in the fourth segment is where you want to have some lights split off from the main string. Make sure you have everything unplugged before you make the cut. Next I'm going to go ahead and separate the wires and strip them back. I'm then going to take a 3 slot Wago connector and get everything reconnected making sure to match up the wires correctly. And here's where I'm going to be introducing some lights that I'm going to try splicing into the run. This was a leftover segment I had from previous experimenting and I still believe it has 8 lights left. I'll strip back the wires and get them connected to the same Wago making sure that the wires again are all going to the correct spot. I'll plug things back in, and as you can see, all the lights are working perfectly. Next, I'm going to plug in another segment on the main run to see if that affects anything, and thankfully, everything is still looking good. I'm 
then going to plug in the last one to get back to our initial six full segments plus our additional spliced in lights and we're still in business as all the pixels are working with no flickering or drop in brightness along the run. Now at this point I was curious to see what would happen if I tried splicing in another string of lights at the same spot as the other. For this I'm first going to replace their 3 slot WEGO connectors with their 5 slot version. Once this is done, I'm going to take another string I had laying around, and this one I think has the full 12 lights left, and get it hooked up at the same spot. I know it might be tricky to follow with all the wires, but we have our main run going on up here, and off of that I now have these two separate splices. The first one we did that has the 8 lights, and the second one that we just did that has 12. And again, everything's working great with no flickering lights or loss of brightness. So the last thing I want to try is to see what happens if I split everything right at the beginning, after the controller, but before the first LED. For this, I'm going to begin by unplugging the last three segments, then I'll basically be doing the same thing I just went over, but this time I'll be cutting the strip right before the very first LED on the first segment like I'm doing here. Next I'll be using three slot waggle pieces to reconnect the strings back together. And finally I need to take the other three segments that I disconnected in the previous step and attach the beginning of those lights to the waggles. Now we do have a mess of wires, but I'll try to separate them so you can see how right at the beginning we have everything split going in two different directions. The top run has three full segments connected, and the bottom also has three full segments, plus both of the splices we made in our previous example are still attached. And just like you'd hope to see when the data is being split, the top and bottom parts are doing the same thing at the same time. So I hope this was somewhat easy to follow, and I hope it at least answered some of your questions out there on if this could be done. Now obviously every scenario is going to be unique to your particular install, but it is nice to know that it's certainly possible to do. Thank you all for watching, and as always, I hope you have a blessed day. So I've yet to experience any flickering after cutting up the Govi permanent outdoor lights, but I have seen a few comments where some have. In today's video, I'm first going to try to recreate the issue, and then see if I can fix it. First, let's make sure everything is working. I have 6 full segments with 12 LEDs on each connected. Now I already have a couple different DIY extension splices in some of these strips like right here, here, and here that I went over how to do in a previous video, but like you're seeing now, there are no issues. Moving on, I'm going to attach the 12 foot extension cord that the kit came with after the 5th segment. I'll plug the lights back in, and again, everything's looking good. Now since I originally had two of these outdoor kits, I still had the other 12 foot extension cable, so I'm going to connect that to the end of the previous one, and I was actually quite surprised that there's still no flickering even after the 24 foot gap, not to mention the other splices in some of the segments. I'll now try adding a 7th segment to the end, and this is another one of my Frankenstein strips from the previous video where I added some wire in between LEDs. I'll fire things up, and finally, we can see that there is significant flickering on the last two segments. So for power injection, I'll clear things out to make it a little bit easier to see. I first tried splitting the wires after the controller but before the first LED like you're seeing here, and reconnecting them using 3 slot waggles so that I could run my injection wires from this point. 
And fortunately, it is pretty easy to tell which one is which on the back because the wire with the black line is your ground, the line in the middle is your data, and the third one with no markings on it is your voltage. Now back to our main run, I already had a spot cut and reconnected towards the beginning of the sixth segment with three piece wagos where I'll try running the injection wires too. And for this I'll use two separate 18 gauge silicone wires to make the jump. And what I'm doing here is connecting one end of the ground wago of the splice at the very beginning of the strands to the ground wago of the splice we did at the beginning of the sixth strip which is about where we started seeing the flickering happen. Then do the same thing with the other 18 gauge wire but connecting the voltage to voltage. So let's plug it in and as you can see all the lights are functioning normal with no flickering. And just to make sure that this is actually what's making the difference, I'm going to remove the power injection wires, turn it on, and we then go back to flickering at the same spot as before. I'll put the injection wires back and again the flickering goes away. And finally, I was curious to see what would happen if I instead used about 25 feet of wires to inject power instead of the 4 foot long sections I was using. And sure enough, no flickering and everything looks great. Now the other place you could do your power injection from is at the beginning, after the power supply, but before the controller like you're seeing here. I'll go ahead and insert my two injection wires where white is the ground and red is the voltage, and run these to the exact same spot as before. And just like you'd expect, everything's working perfectly. And I'm not sure if there is a benefit of one method over the other, but depending on your install, one of these options might be better for your situation. Now the very last thing I was curious to find out is if I instead put the power injection at the very end of the strip instead of right where the flickering started to see if that would make any difference. So I cut the very end of our run and stripped back the wires and attached the power injection to a couple inline wagos, and sure enough, everything still worked great. So this was definitely a fun little experiment to see if flickering lights could be fixed with some simple power injection like I demonstrated in this video. Thank you all for watching, and as always, I hope you have a blessed day. So I recently installed the Govi Outdoor Permanent Lights on my house, which I absolutely love, and then followed up that video with another one going over how you can cut, extend, splice, and waterproof them. But like always, curiosity got the best of me, and I wanted to find out if they're in any way compatible with WLED, and if so, how you would go about getting everything set up. I'm first going to take the power supply that the lights came with and connect it to the Govi controller just like you normally would be doing if you're setting these up. Then, about halfway between the controller and where we connected this to the power, I'll go ahead and make the cut. 
Now make sure to hold on to the controller because it still has value, which I'll get into later on. From here, I'll be stripping the outer sheath as far back as I can. This is going to expose the red voltage and white negative wires underneath. Then, go ahead and strip those two wires back, each about 10 millimeters. Next, I need to find the beginning side of the strip of the outdoor lights. The easiest way for me to figure this out was to find the end which has this style screw cap like you're seeing here. Since I know this is the end, I can then locate the other side which is the beginning. From here, I can cut off the connector piece, separate the three wires, and then strip them back. Moving on, I recently found these thicker 20 gauge jumper wires on Amazon that have worked out great for a lot of previous projects. I'll need two of these that have one male and one female side. And as far as controlling the lights, I already have the awesome and free WLED program installed on this ESP32 board. Now I won't go into those easy steps since I already made a video going over that simple process that you can watch if interested. So in this step, all I'm going to be doing is plugging in the female end of one jumper wire into the GND pin on the module. Next, I'll take the other jumper wire and again put the female end into the D2 pin of the ESP board. Now that things are prepped, I have to get everything connected, and no surprise here, I'll be using some Wago clips. I'll need one 3 slot connector and two 2 slot pieces. I'll first take the main power supply and insert the white negative wire into the 3 piece Wago clip. I'll then do the same for the red voltage line, but this one will go into one of our 2 slot pieces. Next, let's turn our attention to the LED light. Now the biggest thing to remember is that when I'm holding the lights flat like this, Govi has the top wire as the positive, the middle as the data, and the bottom is our ground. I'm going to first take that bottom ground wire and insert it into one of the two remaining openings on our three slot Wego piece. Then I'll insert the top voltage line into the two slot Wego piece that has our other positive wire from the main power supply. Moving on to the controller, I'm going to take the male end of the jumper wire that's plugged into the GND pin on the ESP32 board and install that into the last remaining opening of our 3 section Wego clip. And last but not least, all that's left to do is to connect the male end of the jumper wire coming from our D2 data pin on the module to the middle data wire from the LED strip using a separate 2 slot Wego. Now we do need to power the ESP32, and for this I'm going to be using an old phone plug and a micro USB cable that I had laying around. This can get plugged right into the module like I'm doing here. And at least for me, I would probably just shove all this into a small junction box, and since these, for the most part, will be installed under an overhang, I personally would not be concerned about rain or snow since it would be protected. So the moment of truth has finally arrived. Once everything's plugged in, go ahead and pull up the WLED app. And as you can see, I do have a lot of controllers around the house running WLED, but the one connected to these lights is right here. Once you're on the main screen, click configure near the top right and then into LED preferences. I do have the brightness limiter turned off, which you can certainly play around with, but other than that, scroll down, make sure you have WS281X selected from the drop down, make sure you indicate what your data output is, and since we connected ours to the D2 pin, I'll have two in this field. And finally, for your length, you can manually enter how many lights are connected, which currently there are 12 in this setup. Then near the top, hit save and your light should automatically come on. And just like that, these lights are connected and 100% being controlled with WLED, and all the animations and effects are working absolutely flawlessly. Now I was curious and wanted to make sure that these results would be the same if I plugged in more lights, so I added about 3 or 4 more sections to find out. And in case you're wondering why these additional segments look a little strange, these were the lights that I did all my cutting, extending, and waterproofing tests on, so they still have all the splices and heat shrink tubing on from that. But once they're connected, go back into LED preferences and update the number of lights we now have, which is 48, hit save, and they should all be lit up. I'll run through some more animations, but again, everything's working beautifully. So if you're already familiar with WLED, you know how awesome the program is, but if this is your first time hearing about it, I will leave a link in the description to a video I did recently going over some of my favorite animations, effects, and settings. Now above and beyond just the WLED aspect, it's also fun to think how I might be able to incorporate LED FX into this setup, which is able to run Sound React software to your lights in real time. I did make a couple videos on this free program that you can check out if you really wanted to get your brain thinking about all the fun things you might be able to do. Now you may be wondering, does this mean you hate Govi software? And the answer is not at all. I just really like having options. Govi has done an incredible job with their app and features as well as creating an ecosystem where everything can talk and sync together. So in case you want to have the option to switch back and forth, I'll now quickly go over how to get the same lights back up and running using the Govi controller. First, you can remove the ESP32 and the jumper wires from the Wago clip so that all you're left with are the two Wago clips connected to the red and white wires from the power supply. 
Next, take the Govi controller that I told you to hang on to at the beginning of the video and strip back the outer sheath. Then, strip back the red and white wires underneath and connect those to the Wago clips making sure that the red goes with the red and the white to white. Moving on, basically we just need to get the screw on connector piece reattached and you very well could use the one that we cut off in the beginning of the video. Just separate the wires, strip them back, and use some Wago clips to connect everything back together again making sure all the wires are lined up correctly. Then we can plug the beginning of the light strip into the end section of the controller, plug in the power, and everything is now back up and running using the Govi software. So that about does it for this video. I was super happy at how easy it was and how great it worked to modify these Govi outdoor permanent lights to work with WLED. From here on out I'll go ahead and reconnect the ESP32 and run through some more of the WLED animations so you can see a little bit more of them in action. But as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a blessed day. So I just came out with a new video where I added all these lights to my house which in total took about 4 hours of my time to install. Now a lot of people commented on that video wanting to know the specific settings I used in the Govi app to get everything synced together which is what I'll go ahead and walk you through now. And to get you up to speed in case you didn't see that video yet, I installed one of their permanent outdoor 100 foot kits on my roof line, I have 3 sets of their curtain lights installed on my garage door, and I used a total of 4 of their 66 foot brand new string lights to wrap around the 4 pillars in front of my house. The first thing I'll walk you through is setting up their Dreamview scenes, which really takes advantage of all three of these products. Once everything's been added, open up the app and go to the Home tab, scroll down, and click the plus icon under the Dreamview section. Then slide over and select Scene near the top right and click Create in the center. You're now going to be presented with a list of all the Govi products you have synced up. I'm going to only select the ones I have outside right now set up, which will be my Permanent Outdoor Lights Pro version that I have named House Lights, the four string lights set up on my four pillars that I have named Left, Right, Middle Left, and Middle Right, and then the three curtain lights that I have named Middle, Right, and Left. And as you can see, pretty much any Govi product can be added to this mode, so you can really go crazy with this if you have a lot more of their other lights. And once you have all your selections made, you can hit Quick Add to begin. Now I scrolled down to make sure everything was added and it looks like I forgot to uncheck my Lyra floor lamp, so I'll quickly go back in and remove that. So one thing I'm glad they included is the ability to adjust the brightness of each product individually in this scene mode. And at least for me, I found the curtain lights to be far too bright at 100%, so I usually end up adjusting those down to around 9 or 10%. And from here you can choose between the different scenes they've created that with one click changes all the lights selected to fit that theme best. They even include some ambient sound to fit the mood. I'll go ahead and play some of my favorite examples before we move on to the Dreamview music sync setup.
So now let's turn our attention to the music mode. Again, click the plus icon under Dream View, and this time, instead of going to Scenes, you're going to select Music. It's now going to show you a list of compatible devices that we have connected that we can choose to be our main mic to act as the brains of the operation. And what this means is basically we have to tell the app what microphone we want to be the one that's picking up the music. And from this list and what I have set up outside, I could use the Outdoor Permanent Pro lights or one of my four string lights to act as this hub. But I ended up buying one of their Outdoor Music Sync boxes because it has a built-in rechargeable battery and it can be moved around to wherever the music is so I don't have to rely on bringing the music to one of the controllers if that makes sense. Once you've assigned the main hub, you now have to again select all the lights you want to be part of the show. I'll be choosing the same ones as I did before with the Dreamview scenes. Now a lot of this stuff is going to be personal preference, but at least for me, I'm not a fan of a bunch of different colors going crazy like everything is defaulted to. So the first thing I usually do is start deleting colors, and one of my favorite combinations is reducing things down to just orange and teal. Now one other thing that is worth mentioning is the recommended color scheme option that I use quite often. There is a lot you can do with this, but essentially you pick a base color and then click configure color scheme, and it will quickly cycle through a lot of different options that once you find one you like, hit OK, then hit apply, and all the lights will change to that selection. And again, some people might have a completely different opinion, but at least for me, I kept going back to either pulsate, fluctuate, shimmer, and aspiring as they seem to have the most dynamic reactions that I ended up enjoying the most. So now that you've seen how easy it is to set up and the basics of what I like to do, I'll play some of my favorite examples so you can see it all in action. I'll also leave the app open so you can follow along in case you're wanting to replicate anything exactly like I'm doing.
So last year Govi launched their permanent outdoor lights and I really don't think they truly understood how big of a market there was for a product like this because demand far outweighed the supply and they were always out of stock. In today's video I'll be taking a closer look at some of their popular outdoor offerings to see just how big of a difference adding some simple plug and play lights can make for an outdoor space. Now the first item I'll be taking a look at will be their permanent LEDs. I'll be setting up and testing out their 30 meter option, but you can also get this in a shorter 15 meter version if 30 is more than what you need. Opening things up, you have the user manual, a quick start guide, one 3.7 meter extension cable, extra 3M sticky pads, the controller, power supply, and six individual 5 meter sections of lights that you can connect together. Taking a closer look at these lights, they are completely enclosed and the LED itself is certainly a little bit bigger than the LEDs you would find on your traditional strips, so I do expect these to get very bright on their max settings. Now they do recommend you quickly test things out before hanging to make sure they work. I'll separate all the lights into their six sections. Next, I'll take the power supply and connect it to the controller. Then, just go ahead and begin adding your lights one after the other. I'll bring it up closer here so you can see how the connection process works, which allows things to be watertight. And I'll quickly mention that if you need to jump an area of your house that doesn't need lights, the 3.7 meter slash 12 foot extension cable is connected the same way that you would the light strips. Once everything is connected, go ahead and plug it in to make sure all the lights are functioning. Now moving on to the second product I'll be incorporating is their 10 meter long waterproof neon rope light. Opening things up you have the getting started information, the neon rope with the control box, the power supply, and a couple different mounting options. And finally I'm also going to be trying out their floodlights. These come with four individual panels, the power and controller, and stakes you can attach to each of the frames to secure it to the ground. So now let's move on to getting things installed. I recommend first measuring things and coming up with a plan on where you want the lights to start and stop as well as where they'll be plugged in. And being that you only have one gap jumper cable, you have to be strategic about this. However, I do plan on making a follow-up video where I'll cut these and splice in my own wires plus waterproofing them. Now Govi doesn't recommend doing this, but I really don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. A couple things to point out while I'm putting these up is that you're going to want to install them about 1 or 2 inches away from the side. This ensures that a good amount of light will actually hit the siding, which is what you want. So from here it's all pretty straightforward. I'm applying the sticky pads to the underside of my garage hangover and then holding down for at least 5 seconds to make a good bond before moving on to the next light. And I did disconnect everything since I figured it'd be easier to work with each 5 meter section individually and simple enough to reconnect them as I go along. The process of getting these hung up was very easy and altogether it probably took me about 45 minutes to install all 100 feet of the lights. And right here is where I ended up using the one gap jumper that they included with the kit. So this was about 4 months ago and I wanted to hold off filming the rest because I knew my wife wanted a small deck off to the right side of the stairs which I wanted to get done first in order to have more options to place the other lights. Fast forward to 2 weeks ago and I finally got around to building that deck and as you can see it's quite the transformation. I did end up making a video of the entire process so make sure to check that out if you're interested. The first thing I'm going to do is install the neon rope lights. I'm going to use the white clips that they come with and even though I could screw these directly into the wood, for now I'm going to see how things hold up with just using the sticky pads. My idea is to put the rope lights on the bottom of the boards pointing down so the colors will really pop against the white trim. And being that this product is 10 meters long, I should be able to wrap it around the entire perimeter while hiding the power supply behind the side of the house over here. Next I'll be setting up the floodlights, and I'm not really sure where the best place to put these are, but for now I'm going to use them to provide some uplighting on some of the bushes over here as well as the tree. And these are about as easy as it gets to install as you can just shove them into the dirt using the ground stakes that they came with. And finally since I do have a little bit of an overhang above the deck, it'll provide enough protection from the rain to allow me to use a couple of their indoor products. This one is their small desk light, and over here I'll be using their Lyra floor lamp. Next you can fire up their app and once you have everything connected there's a couple different ways you can go about controlling the lights. Right here under devices you can individually access each product but more than likely you might want to control them all at once so I'll show you two different options you have for that. First is to click on home near the top left, then scroll down and click on group, select add near the top, basic group control, give it a name and then I can add all the different devices that I have outside. This will allow you to turn all the lights on or off at once, control brightness, choose an individual color, choose multiple color palettes or create your own, and some basic sound react functionality. Now the second option you have is to go back to home and this time click on dream view, then add, scroll over and select scenic, create, 
And again, select all the lights you want to have synced up together. This is going to allow you to choose from different preset animations that all the lights will be synced to, and in my opinion, this gives off the biggest wow factor. So from here, I'm going to roll the final pictures and videos, but I'll also go over examples of the app functionality in action, so make sure to watch until the end in case you're interested in seeing how this all ties together. One, two, three, test, 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 check, check. 